A while ago, I did a reaction video to PetSmart's hamster care pamphlet that they have in stores, but since then they have put out an updated one and my PetSmart takes a really long time to get anything new in for some reason, but I was at PetSmart the other day and I finally saw that they had an updated hamster care pamphlet and the one I reacted to last time was not so good. We have PetSmart's bare minimum. Here is my slipper. Here is PetSmart's minimum. Hamsters are omnivores, not herbivores, PetSmart. I don't know what to call this. This is not this is not a care guide. This is an incorrect care guide that needs to be highly updated. So I wonder what they <laughs> have updated since the last one. So this is a getting to know your Syrian and dwarf hamster pet smart care guide. And um, let's take a look at it. Okay. <laughs> so this is, uh, it's, it's like, this is how big it is. So compared to the last one that I looked at, which had like actual sections of each care requirement. This just looks like they've taken like a couple of points and put it onto a pamphlet. It's quite vague looking. <laughs> Energetic and athletic hamsters. Their fur lined pouches that extend from their head to their shoulders help them transport food. So that's a good. A good fact about hamsters, I guess. Experience level, beginner. I would disagree. <laughs> Size, dwarf hamsters grow up to three to four inches. Syrian hamsters grow up to five to seven inches. Are they also including Chinese hamsters in this? Or, or are they just lumping them in with dwarf hamsters? I don't know. Lifespan, on average, they live for two years. It's good. Behavior, hamsters are nocturnal and love running on their hamster wheels at night. Diet, hamsters are omnivores. <laughs> they changed it. If you didn't know the last time I reacted to their cure pamphlet, they proceeded to tell me that hamsters are herbivores. Nutrition and maintenance. Hamsters are... They're not, and that was a very big deal. <laughs> So I'm glad they switched it to hamsters are omnivores. At least they can get one thing right. Social. While Syrian hamsters are sociable with humans, they're solitary animals and should live alone. Most dwarf hamsters, however, are social animals and can be housed with another of the same sex. So I honestly think they should just stick to saying that all hamsters should be housed alone. The dwarf hamsters at PetSmart is gonna be housing or selling in their store are actually hybrids and uh, the fallout rate with hybrids is really really high and it's one of the reasons that I don't recommend housing dwarf hamsters together because you're not gonna likely have purebred dwarf hamsters. You're gonna end up with a hybrid. A hamster habitat. So they give you a little little image here of what a hamster habitat apparently should look like. It has less than the minimum needs. <laughs> First is A, the habitat, which is just in general too small. B, water bottle. We have a hide, small pet bedding, food dish, transport tube, and an exercise wheel. No chews, no toys, no sand bath. <sighs> How do I set up a hamster habitat? Place the habitat in a low humidity area that school temperature should be around 65 to 75. And add a direct sunlight, that's perfectly fine. Line the habitat with an appropriate amount of clean bedding. Okay, but what's an appropriate amount? The bedding should be spot cleaned as needed and changed as directed by product packaging. This is really funny because there's a reason this care guide is being so vague and I'll get to that in a minute. Add in transport tubes and an exercise wheel for play and exercise. Okay, but how big of a exercise wheel pet smart? Cause a Syrian and a dwarf hamster aren't the same size and they certainly shouldn't 
be running in the same sized wheel. Okay. <laughs> Hide houses will provide your hamster with a private spot. Edible nests will encourage your pet to chew and should be cleaned regularly. So there's a reason PetSmart's being really, really vague in their pamphlet and they're not going into specific details. And that's because they want to be able to sell everything they sell in the store. So if I remember correctly, the pamphlet before they had, they actually specified that cedar bedding and I think they even mentioned pine. I can't remember. They actually said that it should not be used for hamsters and it's not good for them. Cedar bedding is not recommended for small pets. Well, at least you know cedar isn't. But they actually sell cedar shavings in the pet store. So if they're contradicting themselves by putting it in their pamphlet and then selling it, people are gonna be like, well, what the heck? And they're also then, if they're reading, oh, cedar's not good for hamsters, they're not gonna end up buying it. But if you're vague and you don't put what is safe and what's not safe in your pamphlet, people are going to buy whatever. They're gonna go, okay, go to the bedding, buy the cheapest one. And that is dirty, PetSmart. They're also saying like, just follow the product packaging. They're not saying like, oh, they should have, this certain amount. They also put, say, an appropriate amount of clean bedding. What is appropriate amount? For me, an appropriate amount would be enough for a hamster to burrow in, which would be like at least six inches closer to 10 inches. <laughs> what should I feed my hamster? Okay, so we have a pie chart here and they say 80% pelleted food. That's it. Just pelleted food, no seeds, no grains. That's 80% just solid pellets, the rest of your life. Why do they treat hamsters like they're actually prisoners? 15% vegetables. Um, I've never made a pie chart for a hamster's diet, so I actually would not know how much vegetables a hamster should have. Vegetables should be in a hamster's diet. They're healthy for them. I just don't know what the percentage would be. And then they say 5% fruit and treats and that you can offer treats twice a week. And of course they include that water should be clean and fresh every day. Uh, they actually even go as far as to put, when should I contact a veterinarian? Which kind of hints at the fact that hamsters should go to the vet and will need to if they're sick. So they basically say like, you need to Make an appointment with your vet if you notice any cloudy, sunken, or swollen eyes, wheezing, sneezing, discharge from eyes, nose, or mouth, overgrown front teeth, bare patches, sores on the feet, weight loss, not eating or drinking, diarrhea, or discolored droppings. And then on the back they have a shopping checklist and... They have dwarf hamster habitat sized, 12 by 12 by 12 or larger. And so that's 144 square inches of floor space. I don't even know if that can really essentially fit all of the bare necessities a hamster needs. Syrian hamster habitat sized, 20 by 10 by 12. So that's 200 square inches of floor space. Wow, such a thrilling and large cage. Pelleted hamster food, food dish, water bottle, bedding, exercise wheel, hide, nesting material, treats, wood too. So this is the most vague care guide I've ever seen. The one that I previously reacted to, I'm honestly wanting to say that it had better information. I mean, both of them are still awful but the previous one at least had more to it. This is so vague and doesn't go into detail about anything. Oh my gosh, I, I'm sorry, but PetSmart is, PetSmart cares about your money. They don't care about your pet. Should I make my own care guide and just slip it into the PetSmart one secretly? I think that's illegal. Don't do that if you're thinking, of... don't get in trouble, but I'm just, Oh, pet smart, why? So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and I will see you in my next one. Bye.